Okay, so so chapter two, in you know, the book natin. Okay, we're going to go on this so called spectrochemical measurements. Now, we're going to encounter some term here. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it already. Okay. So, In this, uh, what we call spectrochemical measurement, we're going to look at how, okay, we use the optical instrument or our spectrochemical instrument in measuring the physical uh, property of a given sample. So maybe we could start like what we do in an analysis, the steps that is involved in the determination of the concentration of the analyte in the sample. So it's always the concentration, okay? It's not enough that you have only what? Presence of the sample. Much better if you can determine uh, how much is present there. So Siguro, the first step that we're going to do is we need the sample, okay? Because without the sample, we don't to analyze, okay? And we're lucky if we can use the sample as is. But we know we seldom has uh, that uh, what we call analysis, okay? Hindi pa tayo yung type na, I don't know if you watch uh, sci-fi movies. So when you put the sample, you could just ask, uh, what's the composition of this? Wala pa tayo doon, okay? Kahit yung tinatawag natin, makikita natin sa, I don't know if you are fan of CSI, Okay. Uh, hindi pa tayo ganun ka-high tech. Okay. Ang ano nga nila dun sa CSI, they, they said that they tack time cheat. If you see some scene, they put something and then all of us, lalabas na lang na ito yung sample. But we all know that's not how it's being done. Okay. You have to analyze it and then you have to compare it with standards or maybe a library that is present already. Okay, so once we analyze, uh, we have the sample, the next thing that we do is the sample prep or treatment to produce your analytical sample. So we could say from your raw sample, magiging analytical sample na. So this is the one that we're going to use for analysis. Okay, now the next thing that we have, the analytical sample, that's how are we going to present your analytical sample to the instrument. So meron tayong tinatawag na destructive ba yung introduction or non-destructive? So anong pagkakaintindi nyo dyan? <laughs> In both the spectroscopy, uh, uh, spectroscopy that we have, some of them are destructive, some of them are non-destructive. So uh, anong ibig sabihin niyan? <laughs> Alin yung gusto natin? AAS po. Okay. Destructive po siya. In a sense na yung sample ay i-vaporize. Tapos later on, i-atomize pa siya. Hmm. So, ibig And sabihin, pag-destructive, hindi mo siya marirecover. Okay? So, it depends yan kung ano yung analysis na ano mo. Because like AAS, there's no such thing as non-destructive method on that. Because for them, To be analyzed, you have to heat them, okay, to, to form into an atom. Uh, at, uh, you atomize them. And that's the only time that they're going to what we could be analyzed. Okay, now, some we could say are non-destructive. I think most of the uh, spectrochemical uh, measurements are non-destructive. Okay, You can recover your sample. So when you say recover the sample, you can use it again, okay? Th that's why the, uh, the experience that I have in my other lab, so whenever I go there, uh, usually three to four instruments are running at the same time. And all I need is I put my sample in 
a cubet. So from one instrument to the other instrument, I do the measurement. Like I get the absorbance first, and then after that, I get the fluorescence. And then after that, sometimes I use it uh, for uh, CD, circular dichroism. And sometimes, okay, uh, I use that in Raman or IR. Pero hindi na yung cubet, kukuha lang ng sample, tapos ilalagay kung ano man yung window sa IR or kung ano man yung slide na gagamitin doon sa uh, Raman. Okay? So that's the different uh, way of putting your sample to the instrument. And as you could see, most of the diagram that has the spectrochemical measurement uh, instrument, meron siyang chamber or what we call part na sample. Okay? Either you input the sample through aspirator or yung nebulizer, or put the nebulizer na AAS, or you use a cubet that we're going to know okay, in the succeeding chapter. Now, once we present that thing here, so the next thing that we're going to do is the use of the standards in the calculation. Okay, so as, uh, as I have uh, said, okay, the analysis is only possible if we have this so called comparison with standards. Without that, okay, it's very hard, okay, unless you already have uh, what we could establish the, the chemistry of it, like you, you know already the molar absorptivity. So you know that, okay, for this compound, okay, the molar absorptivity is equal to this. So all you need to do, once you get the absorbance, you can get the uh, related concentration right away. But, okay, you seldom has uh, what we call that knowledge, okay? Especially if they develop ka pa lang nung ano, yung method analysis mo, you don't have that leeway. So you have to use these standards. Now, the type of standards uh, that you have, it could be the calibration curve or ano yung isa? For the single uh, point calibration or yung tinatawag na standard addition. Now, all of them would require calculation. Tomorrow, uh, when we analyze the manganese in steel, so they will use two methods, both spectroscopy. One is AAS, wherein they were going to have calibration curves, so different concentration of manganese. And the other one is uh, UBB's absorbance, especially uh, visible absorbance, where they're going to oxidize manganese to permanganate. So permanganate is a colored one, okay? But they will only use standard addition. So they have three setups. So yung isa blank, yung isa sample, tapos yung isa, okay? So I mean, lahat sila may sample, okay? Uh, yung isa, lalagyan mo ng uh, coloring agent, yung isa blank lang, hindi mo ilalagay siya ng oxidizing agent, which is permanganate. Tapos yung isa, lalagyan mo ng standard. So what you're going to do is you're going to compare the signal dun sa sample mo, okay, compare with the sample and the known standard concentration that you added. So yan yung ano dun. So there's what we call calculations that is involved. And then interpretation. So what is the, sample, uh, the results that you have? It always go back to ano ba yung goal mo? <laughs> Why you're doing the analysis. Okay? So interpretation is gusto mo bang mag-develop nito to improve a particular method or you just want to use this method using spectroscopy uh, let's say to serve as an alternative method. Okay? And based on that, dyan na rin papasok yung feedback. Maganda ba yung ana uh, analysis na ginawa mo? Is it okay? It is a good one, okay? So if it's a rapid analysis, then I think that would be uh, ideal. But if the reaction will take an hour or longer, 
then that's not really a very good analysis. So usually, yan yung step doon sa spectrochemical uh, measurement. And if you're going to look at this, okay, so ito yung parang process, yung spectrochemical uh, measurement process. Okay, so if we're going to look at this, everything is, we could say, the most important thing here is this one. Before, maybe during our time, the user is the one controlling whatever parameters he wants to have. But right now, all you need to do is to input the information that is needed by the instrument and bahala na yung computer. Okay? So ano yung inaano ng control system? Ano yung sample introduction system mo? Ano yung encoder? Ano yung optical information selector? And then the radiation transducer, the signal processing readout, and the number. So lahat ng information nandoon sa control system. So if you analyze this one, so you introduce the sample here. Okay. So the sample is usually, you have a raw sample and then sample treatment method or sample pre-treatment method, it makes it into an analytical sample. Okay. Tapos papasok yan dito sa sample introduction system. Now, I really know that a spectrochemical system has an automated uh, sample introduction, but I know chromatographic method, ano na yan, uh, automated na. Okay. The good thing if it's automated is there's less error in terms doon sa amount that is being injected. Kasi kapag manual, it, it based on, on the user. Okay? So maybe yung ibang user, yung tingin sa, let's say, 5 microliter or 100 microliter is lower, tapos yung iba higher. So may inconsistency na agad doon. So yun yung advantage ng automatic kaysa sa manual. Yung nga lang, automatic din yung gastos. Kasi manual. Pag nasira nga sa amin, automatic din yung yung bawas sa funding namin. Okay? Because uh, naka-program kasi yun. But there are instruments that you can have an automated and an annual uh, option. Okay? I, I rarely see something na auto automatic lahat. A ano nga namin eh? Oh, if you want an automated injector, that's an additional 10K. <laughs> Sabi namin, oh, wala tayong pera, wag na natin isama. So sasabihin na lang namin to follow if we have the funding. Okay? So once we introduce the sample introduction there, so they have a different usually concentration, yung C1, C2, C3. Okay? And then when it passes through the so spectrochemical encoder, it going to convert yung concentration into what we call optical signals. Kaya o. I think I put it like this one. Okay? So from whatever the concentration that you have, okay, the encoder would convert that concentration into uh, optical signal. Okay? Now, when you have that into optical signal, you always have this wavelength selector unless you want to scan okay, the range of wavelength. But usually we know when you scan, there's always what? The maximum signal. And usually that's the one that you want to look at. So dyan yung pumapasok yung pinatawag natin monochromator. And when you do that, you're just looking for the optical signal of that uh, sample in a certain wavelength. Okay? So yung concentration dito, pagpasok sa encoder, naging optical signal, and then the selector there, they choose one wavelength. And then, ano pa yan? Hindi pa yan yung ano, yung makukuha mo. Okay? 
i-convert pa yung optical signal mo into electrical signal. Okay? So here, the information selection system selects the desired optical uh, signal for presentation doon sa radiation transducer. So sa radiation transducer, kino-convert niya yung optical signal into an electrical signal. So it can be in the form of current, voltage, or frequency. And this is the one that is processed and read out as a number. Okay? So pag lumabas dito, number na yan. Now, minsan, kapag digital at least, meron kang makikita ng 0.123. Kapag analog, <laughs> may mga number-number ka tapos merong parang naikot doon. I don't know if we still have instrument like that in IC. <laughs> dito dinidispose na lang. Kahit sabi ko, no, no, no. I want them to show how the evolution of the instrument. <laughs> Kasi hindi na lang yung puro number ang nakikita. At least makikita nila yung ganun. Kasi nga, kahit mga bata ngayon, alam niyo yung old phone? Yung, nabutan niyo pa yung phone na yun? Sa mga movies na lang. <laughs> so paano i-dial yung number ng phone? <laughs> Inaano namin sa mga bata, bigyan ka namin $20, i-dial mo itong number <laughs> Okay? <laughs> so, ano yun? Talagang analog style yun. But, there's still some instrument like that. Okay? So, ito yung parang we could say, ito yung pinaka-importante sa atin. Okay? And just like any chemical analysis, sabi nga nila, kung ano yung sample mo, gaano ka-representative yung sample mo, okay? That's also the strength or weakness yung analysis mo. Kahit high-end pa, let's say, yung AAS mo, like uh, ICT, o, o di kaya high-end yung uh, UBBs mo, kapag yung sample mo hindi representative, it's nothing. The signal are, are what we call, uh, sabi nga namin, it's just crap. Okay? How, how strong is the analytical method you have depends on your, uh, what we call, sampling method. Y yun yung laging ano, talo ka eh. Kaya minsan, uh, you have to make sure that your sampling method is really representative of everything. Okay? Now, when we're talking about optical uh, uh, intensity, okay, we can expro express it in two ways. So radiometric and photometric. Is this the first time for you to hear it? First time yun ba na ano tong term na to? Parang sir, first time. <laughs> so when we're talking about that, uh, isa-isahin natin yan. But if we're going to look at the difference, so radiometric, so it based on radiometry. So it includes the entire optical radiation. So yung radiometry dyan yung radiation. Okay? So it includes the entire uh, optical radiation spectrum and often involved Ito yung pagkakaiba niya na spectric, uh, spectrally resolved measurement. Okay? Spectrally resolved measurements. So, ano natin yan in details okay, in the succeeding slide. Now, yung photometric system naman, if we're going to look at it, okay? It deals with the visible spectrum. Remember, photo. Pop as in photograph. Diba? We only see the photograph when we are in the visible spectrum. Okay? If you go to IR and the what we call uh, UV, medyo hindi mo makikita. So when you say photometric method, it deals with the visible spectrum weight, uh, weighted by the response of the eye. So, so yan yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa. But we're going to go into details yan because I, I think even in 137, I, I never discussed the term for this one. Okay, so, so ang ano nga dito yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa, mas in-depth tayo dito sa 231. Okay? 
So when we're talking about the radiometric system, so you have a radiometric system of unit that is ba based on the actual radiant energy emitted by a source or striking a receiver. So meron kang tawag na optical transducer. And between the two, this is the one that is prepared by okay, the SI system. And since it is based on energy, okay, yung radiant energy mo, usually ang unit niya is in joules. The SI unit for energy. Okay? And if you're going to look at this radiometric system, there are uh, general quantities used to describe the radiation sources and the radiation receiver. So meron kang radiant intensity, emittance, emissivity, at saka yung tinatawag nating radiance. Okay? So usually, lahat yan, meron silang tinatawag na uh, specifically to radiation from a source. Okay? Now, included din dito yung volume, areas, and solid angle. And this refers to the properties related to the source. Okay? And then, meron din tayong tinatawag na irradiance and exposure. Okay? It describes the receiver and its area. So, madami yan dito, yung radiometric system. But we're not going to go on them uh, uh, one by one. So if you're going to look at this, so meron tayo tinatawag na radiant energy. So that's the Q. Okay? So that's the energy in the form of the radiation. And the units that you have there is joules. Now, pwede mo rin sabihin na radiant energy density. So this is just okay, the radiant energy per unit volume. Okay? Parang mass over volume na density, pero energy lang yung inaano dito. And if you're going to look at this, that's just joules over cubic centimeter. Kasi radiant energy density. Tapos meron tayo yung tawag na power or yung radiant flux. Okay? So this is just the rate of transfer of radiant energy because power is usually what? Amount per second okay, with time. So W is equals to, anyone? The unit of power, what? Okay. So yun, yun yung general. Now, if you're going to look at this in terms of source, so you can have here now the radiant intensity. So this is the radiant power per unit solid angle from a point source. So meron silang formula na inaano dito. We're going to go to them in some uh, details later on. Tapos meron din tayo tinatawag na emittance. Okay? So emittance we could say is the amount of the radiant that was exit. Radiant existence ang tawag dito. So that's radiant power per unit area. Tapos meron din tayo tinatawag na emissivity. That's the radiant power per unit solid angle per unit volume. And then last, doon sa source yung tinatawag nating regions. Okay? So this is just the radiant power per unit solid angle per unit projected area. So you will see the difference between them if you look at the unit. Ito yung pinaka simple way to differentiate them. Okay? And then in terms of the receiver, we can have the regions. Okay? So this is just the radiant power per unit area. So what per cubic area? No, not cubic, per square, okay, centimeter, per centimeter squared. And then we have the radiant exposure. So this is just the power or the integrated uh, radiance, which is joules per square, uh, centimeter squared. So if we're going to look at this, all quantities are in general functions of spectral positions, wavelength, wave number, frequency. So in that, they are usually employed to represent the magnitude of the quantity over some spectral interval. 
So if we're going to look at them in general, this value represents the cumulative magnitudes of the quantity over the wavelength inter, uh, interval from zero, okay, to that specific wavelengths. So if you have the term total that is employed as in total radians, it implies that the radians is over the wavelength interval from zero to infinity, okay? But usually, if we're going to look at these uh, radiometric uh, quantities, we consider them within a small yeah, spectral intervals. So hindi tayo mag talagang total, okay? We usually look at just small spectral intervals. So if we're going to look at the spectral quantities, the, the, the one that I have mentioned earlier, so pwede tayo yung radiometric quantities per unit in spectral interval and a given subscript like for wavelength, for frequency, and for wave number. Okay? So if we have the spectral radians, so this is just B of the wavelength. This is the radians per unit interval per nanometer. So we can do it like that one. Okay? Kung ano man yung spectral radians na meron ka with respect to the wavelength interval. Tapos meron din tayong partial radians. So you can see here, okay? The uh, B with respect to the change in the wavelength. So you have your wavelength two minus wavelength one. So if you do the in, uh, integration that you have here, so this is just B of radiation, uh, B of wavelength times change in wavelength. Okay. Now if you're going to look at the total, so that's everything that you have. So you you look at the integral. Uh, if you integrate here from zero to infinity so it covers everything okay so as much as possible we want our sources to just emit a narrow spectral line okay less than one armstrom why <laughs> so thinking about why we need narrow lines you wonder no, sorry yung background ko. <laughs> In the concert at the Nanirinig niyo ba? <laughs> Para may nagmi music. Why do you think you just need the sp uh, narrow spectral lines? Anyone? Kasi po, as much as possible, gusto natin monochromatic yung light natin. Yep. Kasi kapag narrow lang yung ano mo, titignan mo lang yung certain character. But if you widen it, okay, lalong mag, uh, ano, yung may, may interferences na mangyayari. Sorry talaga ang ingay. <laughs> ano yung ingay nila? <laughs> eh, umano atang ano doon? Naririnig nyo ba yung sound? <laughs> May narinig kayong sound na parang ano. <laughs> Hindi ko rin naintindihan yung kanta eh. <laughs> okay. Now anyway, let's go. Uh, as I told you, the sources that emit the narrow spectral lines, typically haplids or less than one Armstrong, they usually characterize by report, reporting the regions okay, of each line, which is the integrated spectral regions over the total width of the line. So, yung narrow spot lang yung meron kayo doon. So, if you're going to look at this one, okay, uh, you just look at it, spectral regions over uh, what we call the total regions that you have here. And as much as possible, a broadband source is normally characterized by its spectral regions because only part of its emitted spectral range is selected or observed as determined by the wavelength selector. So, meron kang broadband na source, okay? So, that's, ano ba usually yung light source natin? Tungsten, deuterium lang. Pero meron ka rin yung tinatawag na monochromatic source, like laser. So, if you, if you have a broadband source, you need a wavelength selector to 
just select the wavelength that you want to use. Okay? Now, tingnan natin yung geometric factors because I mentioned some geometric factors here. So, when you look at the right geometric quantities, it usually include the geometric factors of solid angle in the projected area. So, if you have here, okay, uh, some of your solid angle, so meron tayo tinatawag na plane angle here. Okay? So, if we're going to look at yung area na meron siya dito. So R here, R uh, length, tapos meron kang arc here. So meron kang tinatawag na one ray dyan. So meron kang plane angle. Plane angle and one ray dyan of an angle is illustrated here. And one ray dyan is the angle at the center of a circle that intercept an arc equal in length to the radius, okay? So we could say that's just one of the geometric factors yung tinatawag natin plane angle. Now, meron din tayo, okay? Kung solid yung sample natin, like massive, and we want to look what, uh, what we call the, the, <coughs> the signal that we have there. So meron tayong tinatawag na solid angle. So ang tawag natin doon sa signal na pumunta doon, Okay, instead of a region, we call it the stair. Mention it, stair region. Okay, so solid angles defined by cone generated by a line that passes through the vortex O. Okay, so that's where it passes through. Okay, and a point move along the periphery of the surface. So this one we could say is a <clears throat> solid sample compared to this one. Na parang open surface, okay? So when we have the one star region, that's the solid angle at the center of a sphere of radius R that substance an area of R squared units on the surface. So if we're going to look at the area of the sphere, you have the four times pi R squared. And if we're going to determine the star regions in the square, so it's just equals to the area divided by R squared, okay? Or it's just four times pi. They are here, it can cancel out. And four times pi, pi is 3.14 something. You have there, the number of state regions as equals to 12.87. So we could say this is the one that we have for spherical sample, okay? And this is the one that we have for plane sample. That I would say that's the main difference that you have here in the so-called geometric factors, okay? Then another example, uh, examples also here is in most spectroscopic uh, situation, one is eventually interested in the radiant power that is incident on a receptor. What does it mean, okay? So example, you have a point source with the dimensions that are small compared to the distance from the source to the receptor of the projected area, which you could say AP, so what we could do, the source could be characterized by the total radiant power that it emits in all direction. So, ang nangyari to, iaano mo yung radiant, tapos titignan mo yung emission na makukuha. So the source could be characterized by the total radiant power uh, that it emits in all direction. And in this case, we could say, it's more useful to use the late, uh, the radiant energy per unit solid angle, which is given by this. Okay, the radiant power divided by uh, four times pi. Okay, and we can also say that a source of a significant area is, if we look at the sphere here. Okay, so we have an area viewed here, A prime one. So the source of the projected area. And then this is the receptor of the projected area, which is A2. Uh, so if we have a radiant power incident on area two of the receptor, uh, it's the source radiant times the area times the solid uh, angle viewed times the area that is viewed. So we have here, whatever, okay, the radiant power that we have here, that is equals to B times the omega 
a prime one, or we could say b times the area that you have here, the uh, receptor projected area divided by distance squared times the area of prime one. Wala tayong calculation dito. We just try to see uh, ano yung effect ng geometric factors kapag ginagamit natin yung radian. Okay? So I think that's that's uh, what we call the applications that we have in radiometry or radiometric uh, system. So the other one that we have is the photometric system. So as uh, we said before, it is okay based on the visible region, and we have here the human eye. So it's a relevant system based on the apparent intensity of uh, a source, okay, as viewed by the average bright adapted human eye. Now, the quantities that we have in this system have only uh, what we call applicable in the visible region. So, ano ba yung wavelength ng visible region? Anyone? Saan siya nagsisimula? <laughs> UV visible region, right? Is it around 300 to 82? What? 700, sir. 700 something? Apa. <laughs> yung Roy G. Bib? Wag lang yung E. Bib. <laughs> Uh, pwede yung hanggang violet, okay? but you go ultraviolet, it's already in the uh, UV region. Now, kung yung radiometric, yung ano natin doon, main, uh, we could say unit is joules because we have the radiant energy. Here we have lumen. Okay? So parang ito yung uh, source of one candela. Candela is what? The unit of luminous intensity, right? So one candela emits one lumen per region. So photometric and the corresponding radiometric quantities are given. So they're still related to uh, the radiometric. Okay? So if you're going to look at yung, we could say equivalent of photometric uh, quantity and unit with respect to the radiometric. So related pa rin sila. So we could say instead of radiant doon sa radiometric, sa photometric we have it in terms of luminous. Okay? So the luminous energy, that's the portion of radiant energy in the visible region. The luminous power or flux, that's the luminous energy per unit time. Okay? The luminous intensity, so if you're going to do your lumen second, uh, yung flux lumen, and then luminous intensity, luminous uh, first region, okay? And then luminous emittance, so this is just lumi uh, lumen uh, per centimeter. That's the luminous power per unit source area. And then the corresponding ir uh, irradiance is equals to illuminance, so that's the luminous power per unit area incident on a surface. And then the luminance or brightness, kahit radiance, brightness din, di ba? <laughs> Pero yung pagkakaiba na itong luminance, that's a more on photometric because we see it with our eye. So this is the luminous power unit, solid angle per unit projected area. So as you could see here, they are, uh, we could say, related to radiometric, but what do you think is being used between the two in spectroscopy? Anyone? Ano sa tingin nyo? Isa-isa kayo sumagot. <laughs> yung photometric or radiometric sa tingin nyo? Kasi i -re relate ko na kung ano yung ginagamit doon sa spectrochemical method and then iisa-isahin natin. Ano sa tingin nyo dyan sa dalawa? <laughs> Each of you, say something. <laughs> Kumbinasan nyo yung ano? Radiometric. <laughs> Kumbinasan nyo yung book. <laughs> ano nyo sagot? <laughs> so si Amiel, radiometric. 
Bakit sa tingin mo? <laughs> so ano eh, parang feeling ko lang parang subset ng photometric si at ah, baliktad. Subset ni radiometric si photometric. Parang cover lahat ni radiometric sir. Okay. Hindi, nice hindi lang po hindi lang po UVBs yung covered niya. Parang ganoon. Yep. Oh, next one. <laughs> si Jeff cha or si Andrea. <laughs> Ano sa tingin nyo, yung ginagamit doon sa spectrochemical method? Yung radiometric o yung photometric? <laughs> Bago ko yan, ano yung next slide? <laughs> to reveal the answer. Ikaw, Jeb. <laughs> yung radiometric din, sir. Kasi parang mas useful information. Yung energies. Yep. So, between the two, it's really the radiometric. Okay? So, if you're going to look at this, the radiant quantities and the spectrochemical methods relationship. So, if you're going to look at some of the classification of spectrochemical uh, methods that we're going to discuss today. So all of them has something to do with radiometric. Okay? So when we're talking about emission, so the quantity that you measure there is the radiant power of emission. So it could be the flame emission, the direct current arc emission, the spark emission, the ion coupled plasma, and DCP emission, okay? And then the most common, that's absorption. So dyan, nandyan na yung tinatawag natin UVBs, molecular absorption, yung infrared absorption, tsaka yung atomic absorption, okay? So if you're going to look at the absorption, the absorbance or the ratio of radiant power transmitted to that incident. So A is just equals to the negative log. Ano ang ano nito? Transmittance, di ba? Transmittance. <laughs> And then luminescence. So that's the radiant power of luminescence. Okay? So here you have the molecular fluorescence, the phosphorescence, the atomic fluorescence, and the chemi chemiluminescence. And then you also have scattering. So here you have the radiant power that this is scattered. So maybe I'm focused not in between Raman scattering. Okay. But there's also turbidimetry, chakanephelometry. And then we have the indirect uh, spectrochemical method. So you have here the RI change, refractive index, the acoustic waves, and the ion current. Now we're going to go on them one by one. Okay? Siguro ito lang yung gagawin natin ngayong araw na to. Look at them. So the first one that we have is emission. Okay? So related dito sa emission na uh, measurements ay yung tinatawag natin chemiluminescence or bioluminescence. So here, if you're going to look at here, there's an energy, thermal, electrical, or chemical energy that goes to your sample. And what happened to your sample? It's going to emit some energy. Okay? In some aspect, pwede mo sabihin na ano, nagflores. So if you're going to look at this, the addition of thermal, electrical, or chemical energy uh, causes non-radiational excitation of the analyte and emission of radiation in all direction. So we could say that there's what we call an isotropic emission. Because what happened, okay, it emits at all direction. And all you need to do is measure yung emission na yun. So if you're going to look at the energy exchanges uh, that occur here during excitation, so ito yung excitation, yung dash line. 
Okay? So what happened here? When Whenever you excite something, there's a tendency for that material to emit. So the emission can be... Okay? Can be this one from the second energy level to the first energy level, or it could be this one from the second energy level to the zero okay? energy level or the E1 from sense to this one. And most of them will have what? A typical spectrum. Okay? So pag tinignan mo yung spectrum na meron ka, so ito yung nagre-represent dito. Ito yung nagre-represent dito. At ito yung nagre-represent dito. So pwede example natin, let's say, sodium atoms. Pag in-excite mo siya sa flame, okay? by collision process, it's going to emit a characteristic radiation. Saan siya naglalaglag? Anong kulay usually yung sodium atoms? Anyone? We, we, we do it in a general chem. Dapat Yellow. Daw, ha? Yellow. Yellow. Dapat daw, kapag nag-ano ka ng flame test, you have to make sure the calcium is, uh, no, the sodium is removed. Kasi masyadong intense yung yellow color niya so it can mass out the other thing. Okay? So yun yung example ng emission. When you heated it, it's going to emit okay, a certain color. Okay? And that certain color is represented by what? Bakit siya nag emit ng certain color? because of the energy that corresponds to that color. Y yung color kasi dito, ito yun eh. Yung wavelength. <laughs> okay? So the frequency of the emitted radiation corresponds to the discrete, discrete energy difference between the levels as shown in the figure. So depende dito sa energy level na to, okay, yung ma-observe mong intensity. So yung term na ginagamit usually sa emission is intensity. Okay? So kasama dito sa emission na to, pwede yung molecular or we could say uh, atomic thing. But if we're going to look at here, when we have a thermal equilibrium is maintained, the number of atoms per cubic centimeter in level I, okay, Ni is related to the total number of atoms per cubic centimeter Nt by the Boltzmann distribution. But I'm not going to deal on this one. Ito yung atom na ayaw yung peak and form. Okay? So here, if we're going to look at the uh, Ni, this is just related to the total number, per, uh, total number of atoms per cubic centimeters by the Boltzmann's distribution. So if you're going to look at this, so this GI here, that's the statistical factor of state I. And then the EI here, that's the excitation energy relative to the ground state. And then you have this so-called partition function. Can it be PKM nyo? May ganitong ano si Dr. Manalo? Parang meron dati, sir. The Boltzmann <laughs> distribution. <laughs> okay? And if we're going to look at this, at some uh, alkali metals like sodium, they have excited levels close to the ground state level. That's the resonance line occur in the visible or near IR regions and are readily observed in media such plane. Okay? Now, if we're going to look at the radiant power of emission from state J to state I, this is given by the population density of the excited atoms and times the probability of AJI okay, per seconds that an excited atom will undergo the transition times the energy per emitted photon times the volume observed. Okay, so 
if you're going to what we call summarize yung erasing power of the mission, it's just the product okay, of the density of the atom, excited atoms, the probability that the, uh, uh, excited atoms undergo the transition, and the energy per uh, emitted photon times the observed volume. So anything that is increased on these factors will increase your radiant power of emission. Okay, so this equation just shows you that the radiant power of emission is proportional to the excited state. So ano kailangan mo for this to increase? Anyone? What do you think will increase the excited uh, atoms, the density of excited atoms? You need a source, a light source. Kasi siya yung mag excite doon sa sample mo. Okay? So yan yung emission. Okay? And they are limited. Limited lang siya doon sa mga substance na nag emit or nag undergo ng fluorescence. Unlike the next one, absorption. So at least, sa absorption, ano lang kailangan mo? You have a light source that acts as your energy source. Okay, so you have an incident radiation here. So we, we could say for the absorption to take place or for the absorption to occur, you just have to look at the frequency of the incident radiation. Okay, it must correspond to an energy difference between the two states involved in the transition. So, look at this. If you're going to represent this, ito yung makikita mong spectrum. Okay, so this represents your, ano to, E1, E2. This is your E1, okay? And this is your E2. Now, does this make sense? Na yung E1 mo, I what? Nasa longer wavelength compared dun sa E2? So alin yung mas mataas yung energy? E2 po. E2. And you can see it here. This is higher than that. And since this is higher in energy, that means that has a shorter wavelength. Hindi na kayo nagkakamali doon. <laughs> higher energy, shorter wavelength. I always use the example. Why do you use sunlight? Ah, sunlight. Sunglass when you look at the sun. <laughs> Okay, because it's more energetic. And we say, why? Because it releases UV that can destroy your eyesight. Okay? Because usually, nalilito pa rin yung Okay? And you're familiar with this. Ano to? Mag-aano lang ang tubig. Kaya lang ha. So this is the classic what? <laughs> Beer's law ba tawag dun? But Beer's if you go, law po, sir. Beer's law, right? But if you Apo. look at it, this is what? And in big A? Absorbance po. So that's your absorbance. And usually absorbance is just the negative log of your transmittance. Okay, and then if you're going to break this down, this is just what? The one 
that was transmitted over to the one that was input, right? And then we can also break it down here, like uh, in other they just say A, B, C, but this is usually your molar absorptivity. And what can you say about your molar absorptivity? Ano masasabi nyo dyan? Usually it is a constant for a given compound. So once nakuha mo na yung molar absorptivity, analysis is so easy. You just need the absorbance, you can get the concentration. B is your Quat length. Is it always one centimeter? So, tingin nyo. Dapat ba yung quat length nyo is always one centimeter? Yes or no? Kung mag to true or false question na ko sa quiz niyo. No, sir. <laughs> the value of B is always one centimeter. E yung iba, Jeff. True or false? <laughs> false, false. False. Andrea. <laughs> Before I came here, I thought it's always one centimeter. And then I saw a, a Quebec that is either more than one centimeter or less than one centimeter. Okay? So usually, yun kasi yung typical na ano eh. Pero yung meron kaming experiment Usually, yung uh, cylindrical type. So, meron ganong kahaba, tapos meron talagang ganong kahaba. So, isang part ng experiment, tingnan yung absorbance nito compared to dito. So, what do you think happened to the absorbance? Let's say if I have here B1 and B2. So, anong mangyayari with respect to A1 and A2? Alin yung mas higher? Malaki po yung A2. Okay. Because if you're going to look at this, A is equals to ABC. So kapag malaki dito, tataas din yung A. But I told you before I, I came here, I said, oh, it's always one centimeter. And then when I went to the, oh, <laughs> pwede pala yun. So usually we have one centimeter, tas pagrama na ganito kanipis. <laughs> The main reason there is because sample size. Even the one that is one centimeter, di ba, minsan yung sample size sila yung meron silang ganun. Mas mahal to kaysa yung ganito. At at least yung laging nababasag sa amin ay yung ganito, hindi ito. <laughs> I think well, this one is around 150. And this one would be around two hundred dollars. So ewan ko magkano yan yan sa Pinas. <laughs> Every year when I have a uh, yung uh, excess funds, I always ordered that thing. Because every year, laging may nababasa. <laughs> okay. Now that is absorbance, and I think that's the most common one. As simple as spectronic 20, buhay ka na. Okay. Alam mo lang kung saan yung maximum, uh, well, uh, maximum, wave, maximum wavelength, you're, you're okay. You can develop a quant uh, quantitative method using absorbance. Now, oh, before that, so ito din yung representation. The, uh, of this thing, okay? So you have here the transmitted radiation equals to the incident radiation times 10 raised to the negative ABC. So that's another way of representing your absorbance in terms of the incident light or tra uh, transmitted radiation and incident uh, radiation. Now, let's go with luminescence. 
the luminescence measurement. So if you're going to look at this, this is just the radiation emitted from a relative cool bodies. Okay. So this is different from emission. Emission usually comes out when you have what? Excited. And then since it's unstable, it will go back to the ground state. And in its case, okay, it will release some form of energy. Now, luminescence, this is a radiation. Emission per inch, but relatively cool bodies. Unlike your emission. Galing siya sa, uh, we could say, higher energy state. And we could say we uh, there are several classes of luminescence, uh, luminescence uh, spectrochemical methods. And we can name them here. Okay, We have chemiluminescence and bioluminescence. If you're going to look at this, your excited analyte species, they are produced by chemical reaction. And what you do, you measure the resulting emission. So chemiluminescence chemi usually chemical in nature, like luminol. Bioluminescence has uh, what we call part no biological system, like the firefly. Okay. So what allow is to, to, to have that, uh, what we call uh, luminescence that it come out. Now, how about electroluminescence? Where do you think it results from? Anyone? So the word electro, okay, which is electricity, which is just what? The movement of electrons in a sample. Okay. And usually they may be caused by electrical discharge by recombination of ions and electrons at an electrode or by the interaction of materials okay, with accelerated electrons such as those in the CRT, cathode tube. So melting luminescence due to electrons or electrical discharge, okay? Tapos, ano kaya itong tribo? Luminescence. Anyone? Ano kaya root word itong tribo nito? Because thermo, you know, is what? Heat, di ba? Thermometer. Okay. But what is about tribo luminescence? Okay. Saan kaya siya nangyayari? Results from what? Usually, it results from the mechanical separation of charges followed by discharge. Alam niyo ng classic example dito? Kaya ba yung parang stick na ginaganon? Mas <laughs> umiliyaw? <laughs> Pero ano pa rin yun? Luminescence lang yun. Tawag ah, okay. dito. Uh, Binibreak mo yun para magkaroon ng reaction. Okay? Mm. Ito is okay. yung parang yung broken crystals ng sugar. Alam yung sugar crystals, di ba? So sometimes, kapag merong mechanical separation nun, okay, nag-emit siya ng luminescence. Yung, yung, yung stick na yun, ano, okay, ano lang yun, binibreak mo para mag-react. Parang doon sa, ano yun, yung sa mga atlet, hot pack, cold pack, you crush them para magkaroon ng reaction. Okay. <laughs> Now, although you have these other luminescence, it's always the chemiluminescence and bioluminescence that is employed in analytical procedure.
you, you seldom see this being employed. Always this one. Okay. And the, the way that they look at the excitation uh, and emission transitions here, maybe I can put in this slide. So parang katulad lang din yan ng emission, right? If you're going to look at the emission here, initially, pero anong pagkakaiba? Dito, yung dash line yung uh, pataas. Compare dito, okay, dash line yung pababa. Okay, so if you're going to look at the dash line there, that's the energy changes during the excitation. Okay, so dito, if you're going to look at the energy changes here, so these are, we could say, Radiation less processes. So, no, ibig sabihin niyan. It doesn't involve the radiant energy. Okay? So, the loss of energy is by emission of photon, at least for this part here. Yung kasing sa emission, yung pagbaba niya dito is energy related. Dito it's mostly uh, radiation less. Okay? So yung type na energy na meron kayong photon emission. But if you're going to look at this, it still gives you the same signal as you had earlier in the emission. So, so the way that you have, the, you have a luminescence so you have an incident light, so there's also a transmitted radiation, but you monitor your luminescence at what? If you're going to look at the angle here, 90 degrees. That's why if you're going to look at floor, a spectral fluorimeter, it's usually an L or a T-shape. You don't put the detector here. Ano sa tingin niyo pag na ano niyo yung detector? <laughs> In a straight way. Hindi ano niyo measure pati yung incident radiation. Yeah. So ang mamemeasure niyo yung incident radiation. Uh, at ang ang mata ang masak masakit nito. Pwedeng masira yung detector niyo because of the energy. Kahit nga ganito, if the intensity is so high, the detector can be what we call uh, pag walang automatic shut off, pwedeng masira. I know that kasi nakasira ako ng detector. <laughs> it's already an L shape. But the problem is since it's not auto shot, yung kailangan namin itaas yung slit at ibaba. So I didn't notice that the laser power that I use is so high. So yung ginamit kong chlorophore is so intense. So nakita na lang namin yung signal na yan parang whoop and then whoop. <laughs> Sabi ng senior member, what's this? Sabi ko, hindi ko alam. You're supposed to tell me. Eh, hindi namin alam na iwan namin yung slip na nakataas. Because you need to control the light. Okay? Now, what more if it's a straight one here? So, kapag yung detector mo sunog, kasi yung laser na mismo yung mag-hit sa'yo. Okay? So, that's the good thing about fluorescence. So, what do you think? Which do you think is more sensitive? Fluorescence or absorbance? Ano sa tingin nyo? Ah. Alin sa dalawang method yung more sensitive? Yung fluorescence of your adsorbance? Anyone? 
hindi niyo nakuha to noon sa spectro ano niyo sa instrumental analysis <laughs> which do you think is more sensitive the fluorescence method or the absorbance method So between the two, it's the fluorescence. But the only problem is not all sample fluoresce. Okay, but if they fluoresce, it's much easy. Uh, it's much better if you're going to what we call use fluorescence method. Okay, we'll put that again when we go uh, one by one. Because right now we're just like an intro and then an overall one. Okay. So if you're going to look at this one, if you ayo ko eh, kaya minsan tinatype ko na lang lang dito. <laughs> okay. Uh, when a portion of the incident uh, radiant power is absorbed so that the transmitted radiant power is less than the incident radiant power. Okay. So you want uh, when the radiant power, incident radiant power is absorbed Okay, you want that there's some transmitted radiant power that is usually less. Now, under many conditions, the radiant power luminous okay, for all wavelength. And we could say there okay, that the uh, radiant power luminous is proportional to the absorbed radiant power. So what does it mean? Pag mas madami or mas malakas yung radiant power mo, Ibig sabihin, mas malakas din yung luminescence mo or yung emission mo. That's why I think I, I, I fried the detector because I use a laser source, which is really, uh, we could say, more powerful compared like a, a broad one source of light. Okay? And we could also say that the transmittent radiant power is related to the analyte concentration. So, kapag mayroon ka pang analyte doon, so the more power that you're going to put, the higher, okay, that you're going to what we call light that you can transmit. Okay? And this is just here, and you can get it by Taylor series. I, I promise we're not going to do like Taylor series here. Okay? That's why I have to type everything like this one. So, ang uh, ano lang dito yung parang uh, take home message here is the more powerful your light source, okay, the more intense is your luminescence or the emission that you will get or the fluorescence that you will get. Okay. That's why I would say this is a this is a more sensitive method compared to the absorbance. So we already have three. Okay. So the next one that we have, the scattering measurement. So if we're going to look at the scattering measurement, this is the radiation from an external source that is going to scatter by the sample. Okay. So here, you could look at the intensity, the frequency, and the angular distribution of the scattered radiation in the spectrochemical methods. Now, there are a lot of type of scattering. Okay. So in molecular scattering methods, the particles is smaller than the wavelength of the incident radiation can scatter the radiation elastically without a change in its energy. A classic example that we have is this Rayleigh scattering or the small particle scattering. So it typically occurs with atoms or molecules. Now the Rayleigh usually scattered radiations occurs in all direction from the scattering particle. Ano yung common application ng Rayleigh scattering? They encounter your buying question, why is the sky blue? Anong sagot doon? <laughs> Huh? Okay. 
Riley scattering yung sagot doon. Okay? Why is the sky blue? Okay, the scattering that it caused by the Rayleigh scattering is what? It caused by the tiny air molecules. Yung tiny air molecules, yun yung Rayleigh scattering. And usually it increases as the wavelength of light decreases. Okay? So if you're going to look at it, the violet and the blue light, they have what? Short or uh, long wavelength compared to the red? Okay, so red has what? The longer wavelength compared to the violet and the blue. They have the shortest wavelength. So in between there, the blue light would scatter more than the red light. And the sky appears blue. Ang main ano noon, reason doon ay yung Riley scattering. And it was named after a person. Okay, but hindi lang yan yung scattering na meron. Okay. And I think all samples, they would exhibit Riley scattering. Okay. At usually problem yan sa Raman. <laughs> you can see it in fluorescence. If you have what we call a water sample, you will always have there if you get the blank na merong water, may lalabas at lalabas na peak. And we call it the Rayleigh scattering. Now, the good thing, if your sample is fluorescent, so pag nag-ano yung sample mo, wala na, sapaw na. If ever it's really distinct like that, so pag sample mo na, mayroong lalabas na ganun, tapos. So that Rayleigh scattering is just caused by the water component. Sa Rama, it's a problem. Okay? Because the Raman is not so powerful. So Raman is a scattering one. So kapag meron kang Rayleigh scattering, you have to find ways to remove that or else you're not going to observe Raman, the Raman scattering. But there are other what we call scattering. Meron tayong tinatawag na d by scattering. The scattering that takes place from larger particles with dimensions on the order of wavelength of the incident radiation. Here, the scattered radiation of the same frequency as the incident radiation, but the angular distribution of the scattered radiations, unlike Rayleigh scattering, it's not uniform. Okay? I never even encountered this. So, nagbabasa ko, ah, meron pala yun. Kala ko, doon, doon lang ano si Peter Debye, doon sa PCM concept. <laughs> and then we have this, my scattering. It's a scattering from much larger particles. Okay, so both D by and the mice scattering, these are large particle scattering, and it can be used to determine particle size and is important in this turbidimetry and metallometry. This is where suspended particles are the scatterer. Okay, and then I think I'll end the slides here with the Brilun and Raman scattering, okay? Pag 10.30 na pala, I mean, 11.30 na pala. <laughs> so these are the form of inelastic scattering because if you're going to look at the one that we have earlier, that's elastic, okay? Now here, the Brilun and uh, the Raman scattering, which uh, is inelastic, which involves a change in the frequency of the incident radiation. Now, the brilliant scattering would result from the reflection of the radiant energy wave by the thermal sound waves. Raman scattering involves the gain or loss of a vibrational quantum of energy by molecules. Now, the thing that you have here is the scattering power is proportional to the incident radiant power. So maybe in the scattering, we will focus more here. Okay? Now, I will end here and then we will continue next meeting. So we try to meet every meeting. And I, I think I will be able to update everything by next meeting because we are on spring break next meeting. <laughs> but I still have to finish the posters of my students because in two weeks, they will go to ACS. 
San Diego. Now, the thing that I would like you to do is maybe, uh, hindi ko pa inaano yung grading natin, but 20% of our grade will be some sort of a review paper. Okay? So if ever uh, we can get it, uh, you can get it written at maganda yung pagkasulat nyo, we will try to submit it okay, to, to a journal as much as possible. So I'm trying to look at the uh, materials that we have. Okay, kung saan, lahat na kayo may ano na, yung copy ng Ingel, pati si Andrea. So remember where we get the book. So I try to look at something there. So meron ako nakita mga review paper. So like this. So parang raman kasi, may tinatapos kasi akong raman ngayon na review paper. So maybe you you can have an idea like one method and in one field of sample. It's up to you. Basta spectroscopy. You want absorbance, let's say, of a particular sample. If it, if you're working on something like you you're analyzing a certain uh, sample for your MS thesis, maybe you choose one method there. Okay. May mga thesis na ba kayo? <laughs> Wala pa? So, so it's up yep, to sir. you. <laughs> you can email me the topic that you want and then uh, I'll, I'll try to see. And I will help you on how to what we call attack on it. Okay. So yun yung uh, ano ko, take home message for now. And you know, Lauren, yung part student natin, okay? I, I added uh, him as a Facebook friend so sana mag-reply siya. Because I think I'm going to just post the link. Hindi kaya nung ano, kapag i-post mo yung video, dalawang video pa lang puno na. <laughs> Wala na akong space. So I just post the link. So I, I'll put this in the YouTube of my uh, up.edu account. So continue on reading the Ingel. Okay? Kasi yun yung magiging basis natin. And then when we go to each procedure, so meron na tayong supplement. So question, before we call it a week. So sorry, hindi ko talaga kaya last Tuesday or last ano, Wednesday. <laughs> But it will not happen. I'm usually nakaano na yun eh, nakaset na. Ang choice kasi is either Tuesday and Thursday. So I said no, I cannot do it on Thursday kasi mas heavy yung schedule ko. So question? Wala na po, sir. Okay, so 